God's idea. Giving is God's plan. As a matter of fact, giving de depicts the very nature of God after Him being known as the Creator. The next thing we see God as is a giver. You read the book of Genesis 1 and you will see it. 1, 2, 3. God made man and from God made man, God made everything and gave it to man. Amen, everybody. And so the nature of God is a nature of giving. And all those who will be like God, amen, must also become great givers. Amen, everybody. All who would be like God must be great givers. And so giving is God's plan. Why? Because it is for the benefits of his people. Amen. Nevertheless, giving seemed to be the greatest test of the human heart. Giving is probably the most difficult thing for human beings to do with joy and generosity. It is hard to give. It is easy to get. It is easy to keep. And there are many other factors that can contaminate giving, many other motivations that you and I may have that giving may, though we practice it, may not be qualified to be a blessing of the Lord. Let's look at Deuteronomy chapter number 15, verse number 7 through 10. And we're going to look at, amen, just a few scriptures as we go down. And first thing we're looking at is this, that giving is a difficult test. And the big test of giving is not how much we have, not how many bills we have to pay, not how much we have left. The big problem is our hearts. There is, there is in the nature of man since the fall of man a desire to be covetous, a desire to be getters, a desire to clutch and keep. Amen. And so uh, Deuteronomy chapter number 15. Amen. The Lord uh, speaking to Moses to tell, give the children of Israel some direction as they would get down to the year of, amen, the seventh year of Jubilee. And this is what the Bible says. If there be among you a poor man of one of thy brethren within thy gates in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not Harden thine heart, nor shut thine hand from thy poor brother. You see that? If there is a poor man in the land. Now, when I read that, the first thing I felt like we need to determine is, who is a poor man? See, see, why that is necessary to be qualified, brethren, is the fact that generosity can be abused. And people who use generosity to get what they want, your generosity, very often it can affect your heart and turn you off about giving. And so, so to not be turned off, it is wise the giver must use discretion to determine who I'm giving to, who I'm lending to. Is it a poor man? Or a man that has a bad habit of not balancing his budget, living above and beyond their needs. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Now, I've got some rules that I made. One of these days, I'm going to write it. It's just now upstairs on scribble paper. But one of the first things I made up my mind is, if I'm going to do what the Word of God says, I want to, I want to make sure I do it right. And so if I'm going to land, there are a few principles I must understand. That, number one, compassion cannot conquer common sense. Some folks can ball real good. They can cry real good. They can, they, the, my, the old folks would say they can pull your heart string and make you give them what you don't have. And the truth of the matter is they shouldn't get it because uh, by giving them without qualifying, you may be empowering someone to go on a binge, amen, that will just do the same thing to someone else. So compassion cannot conquer common sense. So when someone comes and say give or lend, you got to ask them, tell me why. Can I give you a second one? Number two. Amen. Uh, relationship cannot replace reality. By that I mean, don't say, oh, she's my friend, so I've got to do it. Look at the reality. If they say, can I get... 
amen, and you cannot afford to give, don't allow a relationship, amen, to make you deny your reality. Number one. Number two, don't allow the relationship to deny their reality. Because remember now, if they come and ask and just to borrow or to get and their lifestyle is not one that demonstrates temperance and balance and good budgeting, you are not helping. So the Bible says, if there be a poor man, everybody say a poor man, a poor brother, a poor brother is not one that's living in a house that the mortgage is higher than they can afford. A poor brother would sell that house and buy a cheaper one. <laughs> Woo. Uh. A poor brother is not one that, that's going to allow the pressure of society, amen, to say, well, I need a new car because the old one has some rust and you go put yourself in debt. Can't service the debt because you want to drive a new car. No, a poor brother will take the bus. Ooh, you didn't know the Bible was so practical. Well, for the next two, you got to see me later, I'll tell you them. But I'm moving on in the message. So God said to Moses, let's go down to the next verse. We're going down to verse number 10. In verse 8, the Bible said, But thou shalt open thine hand wide unto him that is what? To him that is poor, qualified as poor. Thou shalt not harden thine heart in giving to the poor, nor should you heighten your hand. But you should do what with your hand? Everybody now, you should do what? Open your hand, everybody, open your hand wide. Wide, open your hand wide unto him, and thou shalt surely lend him sufficient for his need. Can I give you number three? Number three is this, never lend what you cannot afford to lose. Folks, if I give you, if I give you $10,000 in loan, in my mind, I know I'm not getting it back. And if you give it back to me, praise the Lord. If I give you $100,000, you say, Pastor, I need a borrower. $100,000. And if I can afford it, and I, and I can afford to lose it, that's the only time I'm lending it. If I can't afford to lose it, uh-uh, I'm not lending it. Because the Bible says, lend not expecting to receive again. So if you are going to lend, write it off. Because if you don't write it off in your soul, it's going to either cost you a friendship and put resentment, wedge, and bitterness between you and a, a friend. So guess what? If someone comes and says, can I borrow? And you know you can afford to lose it. Guess what? Borrow this line. You are my friend. And I cherish your friendship very much. And I'd rather not spoil your, this friendship. I cannot afford to lend. Don't ever... Lend what you cannot afford to lose. Because the Bible says again, if you're lending it, don't expect to receive it. So the Bible says here, if the open your hand wide to the poor man, and surely you should lend him sufficient for his need in that which he wanteth. Go down to the next verse, number 10. Beware, this is the kick, this is where we get a challenge now in giving. This is where the challenge comes now. You can afford it. There's a need you can supply. Number one, if you're going to give it, if you're going to lend it, no strings attached. If you give it, then remember, a gift given does not obligate the person any special tie to you. Because if you give and you feel like you have now earned my friendship and I owe you a special loyalty and I must praise you everywhere I go, then it was not a gift. God so loved the world that he gave. And here's something about God. Now that you've got to catch this. This is moving in my soul. Here's something about God being a giver. God will be so gracious. He's so gracious in his giving. That God will give you a miracle. And allow you to abuse the miracle. And never get mad at you for spoiling it up. Oh you say but pastor I don't think so. Hasn't God ever given. Forgi God ever forgave anyone's sins. And haven't you gone back like a hog to the wall of very often? Has God ever baptized anyone in the Holy Ghost? 
How many backsliders are out there right now that were Holy Ghost filled? Wasn't that a miracle when the Lord filled them with the Holy Ghost? But now they're drunk, they're high, they're stealing, they're cheating, they're killing. Because when God gives you a miracle, it may be the best thing you need. But God, God, God's not holding you captive and said, because I give you this, you must serve me. And you've got to come to church. No, sir. God can give you a gift today and you go steal to, to right as you leave. God is such a God that when he gives, he, you have the freedom to either honor him or still curse him. And if we're going to be like God and we're going to give to a man or give to a church, we must remember when we give that, it's no longer ours. And we must say, God, it's to you I give it. And so it is my blessing to give.